Hey guys, welcome into the Spoken Bee, our NHL podcast here at Nesson.com. I'm your host, Rachel Holt. I'm joined by Nick Goss. Nick, how you doing? I'm doing great. Nick, we have a lot to be excited about. We do. We're a little over a quarter of the way through the NHL regular season. And uh, in past weeks, we haven't always had the best news to report about the Bruins, but this week, we're fired up. We are. Uh, <laughs> two, two weeks ago, they were 14 out of 16 te- uh, East teams in point pace. Uh, they lost four straight, brutal uh, end to November. Uh, and it was really a make or break time for the Bruins, but they weathered the storm. They've won five of their last six, and they're trending in the right direction. So a much more optimistic show, I think, this, this time. This Bruins team currently sits at 11, 8, and 4. They're coming off a huge win on Wednesday night at the Garden against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, the Lightning came into this game as the league's best team. They had the best record. They are having scored 87 goals, the second most in the league. So the Bruins, uh, shockingly, I don't know shockingly if you can say that, but they have a really great record against the Lightning. In their last 22 matchups, they're 17-4-1, which I saw that stat, I was shocked. Yeah, it, it's interesting because, you know, the Lightning have been really good during that stretch, too, and uh, Stamkos, Steven Stamkos, their captain, their best player, has 12 goals in his last 17 games against the Bruins, including five, five games in a row against the Bruins with a goal. So he seems to play well, and the Bruins are able to overcome that and still pull out victories, so it's pretty impressive. Well, the Bruins able to win 3-2 to two last night. Uh, disclaimer, we should say this, the Lightning were in a back-to-back situation. They had they played the night before, so possibly fatigue setting in, that coming into play, but still at the same time, the Bruins got up 2 nothing early in the first period. Probably their best a uh, full period of play in the regular season thus far. It, w- it was fantastic. They had about six or seven times as many shots as, as the Lightning did. They were all over the attacking zone, uh, four checking well, great goaltending, uh, really taking advantage of loose pucks, winning those one-on-one puck battles and getting to the net. Uh, it was uh, as complete a period as we've seen from the Bruins this year, and, and that's what you need. When you're playing a team that's on a second game of back-to-back, you have to start fast, you have to put them uh, right off the, the front foot, and the Bruins pounded early and got a, a three-goal lead. They outshot the Lightning 19-5 to in the first period alone. Now, guys who scored, Charlie McAvoy, mm-hmm. Riley Nash, and Tori Krug. What impressed you the most about this offense in this game? Well, they need they need the scoring depth. You know, they've got some of their big players like David Backus, uh, Bergeron at one point, Marchand came back last night, but he's missed a lot of games. Krejci is still out. They need some of their depth players to really step up. Uh, and Riley Nash has, has done really well offensively. He's looking for a shot. He's capitalizing on his second goal last night. Uh, you want with the, all the forts they have injured, the D's got to uh, provide offensively too. McAvoy gets a goal and assist. Uh, Krug end up, ends up getting the game winner. Uh, those are very two highly off, uh, skilled offensive players. They need that production going forward, so a good sign for them right now. And it wasn't just their offense firing on all cylinders. It was the defense. I mean, they were tasked with covering the top line in the NHL pretty much. I mean, throughout the game, Stamkos and Kucherov, they, who lead the league in points, these guys were held to less than four or four shots on goal. Yeah, the only damage they did was on the power play. Uh, McAvoy played 13-34 against uh, Vice Time against Stamkos. He had only one shot attempt. Uh, that's about as good as you can do. You ask a rookie defenseman to play almost 30 minutes, I believe it was 28-11 to be exact, and take on the league's leading scorer. That's something that the best defenseman in the league can take on. But the Bruins right now, they know McAvoy is good. They know he can handle it. Uh, and he did. He, you know, he, he praised Stamkos after the game. He knows he's a great player, but this is a kid who doesn't back down from any challenge, and it's really impressive. A guy who had a lot to prove in this game, Tuka Rask. I yep. mean, uh, Rask has been winless since November 6th. He's on a four-game losing streak coming into the game last night. Uh, while backup, Anton Hudobin, he's, he's looked phenomenal. He really Hudobin has. has a 7-0-2 record, so... The team plays better, too, when Hadoma's in the net. You can't really argue that. Yeah, it's interesting. They've given it more scoring chances and more shots than Rask in the net, which I think will even out over time. But the two was phenomenal last night. A little shaky at times, but at the end of the second period when Tam Bay really made a push, he came up with some huge saves. And then when Tampa got two goals at the end of the third, or near the end of the third period and they were trying to get that equalizer, he really stood on his head there. Uh, two goals allowed, snapped a four-game skid. Uh, it's... We, we have a lot, big track record of him being an elite goalie. He has one of, the, one of the top three save percentages of any goalie in the last 10 years. Uh, so we, we know that he can produce at a high level. Hopefully for the Bruins, this game launches him into that category again. Um, but it's, you know, in, in NFL, they say if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. It's the opposite in the NHL. You have two good goalies. That's a great situation to have, and that's what the Bruins have right now. Yeah, you can't really feel bad for the Bruins right now. Now, uh, some are calling for uh, Cassidy to question who should be the starting goalie. 
Now Cassidy responded yesterday. There was a lot of chatter lately, so for him, Ras, to step up and get it done and for us to play in front of him so he did not have to stand on his head. Deep down, I think he's going to feel good about this and sleep well, so I agree. I hope he slept well last night knowing he did a good job. Yeah, uh, Tuka talked last night about how he never loses uh, total confidence, but you can, in certain games you can feel it rising and, and, and getting worse as, as the game goes on. I thought he looked pretty confident last night. And you could see in his, in his facial expression he was really happy to get that one. Let's talk about Charlie McAvoy. You already mentioned the, how much minutes of play he got, 28 minutes on the ice roughly. Um, as a 19-year-old rookie too, he had a pretty big task in front of him he of did. covering these uh, monstrous guys from Tampa Bay and he did a great job. He did. I, I gave one of the stats earlier. He, he's, he's been getting that, that task over the last week and a half. He's gone up against Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid. He is playing the best forwards in the league and doing really well. He actually leads the league in even strength ice time per game with up there with guys like Eric Carlson, Drew Doughty, Ryan Suter. He's taking on the toughest offense, uh, defensive assignments while also producing offensively too. Uh, as we mentioned, goal and assist last night. Uh, he's a great playmaker. The breakouts are clean. Good f first passes out of the zone. Uh, he plays like a veteran. I, you know, Bruce Katz said they want to lessen his minutes a little bit. At the same time, when you're going up against uh, one of the best offensive teams in the league, you need your top defenseman to step up and log those minutes. And so far, he's been able to do that. So, you know, th I think you know, expectations were really high for McAvoy coming into the season after he was great in the playoffs last year. And I think he's either met or exceeded those expectations so far. So certainly encouraging for the Bees. When asked about those uh, minutes last night, Cassidy said he's a special player. We don't want to put too much on him. We asked a lot of him tonight. It's going to happen from time to time. But that stuff doesn't bother him. And we got that from McAvoy. He said in the locker room, um, to see Cassidy calling me back out there, that's something I'm real appreciative of. So this is a guy that relishes those big moments as a teenager. Yeah, and he also played in World Junior Gold Medal game. He's played in big games for BU. It's not the NHL per se, um, but he's not afraid of the spotlight. He's, he's going to take that and relish it, and he wants those big matchups, and that's what you want to see from a young rookie. Well, Nick, it's not only the individual players that are surging, it's the team as a whole now. The Bruins have won five of their last six games, three of those wins coming on the road. Good stuff there. They go back on the road next, first to take on the Flyers, who have lost nine games in a row, not given their best stuff as of late. And then they head to Nashville to take on the Predators, who, of course, reached the Stanley Cup final last year. And they're looking great at 15, 6, and 3. So should be a good test for them. Yeah, I think both games will be a test. As you said, the, the Flyers are struggling, but, the, you know, there's been some fans chanting for the coach to be fired uh, and you know they, it's pretty desperate times for there as you mentioned Nashville one of the best teams in the league they did they did beat Nashville on opening night uh, but we know that Nashville is one of the best defensive groups and best goaltending and after that play Arizona very winnable well game you know they have the Islanders coming up Detroit Washington the Rangers it's it's not an easy schedule in December but it's certainly easier than their November slate so I think the Bruins do have a good opportunity this month to pick up some games and uh, or pick up some points and rise and keep their rise in the, in the Atlantic Division standings. I think in November they were just trying to survive these injuries that right. they were getting and uh, they did a great job of that especially as of late so what do you think the key to December is for this team? It's really getting healthy and you know staying healthy on the back end uh, they dressed seven defensemen last night uh, I thought that was an interesting move but they just got to get these guys back you know Brad, Brad Marshall came back against the Lightning so did Dave Backus and Ryan Spooner uh, Marshan was great defensively. Spooner had an excellent pass on Krug's goal, which turned out to be the game winner. Uh, Backus looked like he had good legs under him for a guy that's missed most of the season coming off surgery. Uh, so they, they look good. And, you know, if they get their depth back, I think they can really be a strong team because when they're healthy, they have four good lines. Uh, they have four quality, uh, two quality defense, uh, defense pairs. And as we've seen, they have good goaltending. So when healthy, they're a really complete team. And I think that they're trending in that way right now. The Bruins now sit at third place in the Atlantic Division. We mentioned that they're surging. Meanwhile, other teams in the division are on the decline. The Red Wings have lost five in a row and now sit in fourth place right behind the Bees. And the Senators have lost seven in a row. So how do you like their position in the division as of now? You know, I, I think you know, with all the injuries and the, and the struggles they've had scoring, they're in about as good a spot as they can be in. You know, Brad Marsh, I mentioned that last night as well. You know, they still need to be better. There's still a lot of room for improvement. But when you look at all the adversity they faced and some of the struggles they've had to be in third place and, you know, to, to be above, a lot of teams are ahead of them. And you look at the Metropolitan Division, it's probably the most competitive division in the NHL. I think though that division is going to get both wild cards. It's, it's, I find it very hard to believe that the Atlantic Division could get one of those. So the Bruins would have to be in the top three in the Atlantic in the playoffs. They're in that spot right now. They're getting healthy. They're surging. So I think you have to like where the Breeze are considering you know, all the injuries they've had. We mentioned those injuries. Now we saw the return of some key players last night. Of course, the Bruins uh, were very excited about this, and they did great. David Backus returned 27 days after colon surgery. To put this it's in perspective, remarkable. he wasn't expected to be back on the ice 
for a little over a month from now. Um, so that says a lot about his toughness right there. It does. You know, David Backus is one of the more physical players in the league. You know, he's one of the very extremely hardworking, both on and off the ice, consummate pro. To get him back, get his leadership on and off the ice and his hard working, it's really contagious. When you see a guy, a veteran like that, really battling for every puck, uh, the rest of the guys give that same effort. So I think getting that back is really crucial to the Bruins. He logged almost 19 minutes on the ice. Meanwhile, Brad Marchand also returned after missing the previous six games for an undisclosed injury. He got 22 minutes of ice time, and he did uh, great out there. Two assists, I believe. So Yeah, I mean, um, he's, he's one of the best offensive players. Fell right players. back in there. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, Pasternak leads the, the team with, with 12 goals. Marchand's a guy who can score 40 as well. To have him back in the lineup, Bergeron and Marchand, one of the best duos in the league, both offensively and defensively. So to have him back is really huge. Ryan Spooner, he also played. He had been missing time with a groin injury. He got about 10 minutes of ice time. Uh, so good to see all three of those guys back in action. Uh, we're not at full strength here. That's the only thing. Still injured, Anders Bjork and David Krejci were both scratched due to injury. There's a possibility that Bjork will return on Saturday. Krejci re-aggravated the injury that kept him out for a month. Um, he's day-to-day. -day. And Adam McQuaid, of course, still out. And it will be a while, but he was yeah. on the ice skating. That's so. a good sign. With, with Krejci, it's, it's just so hard to predict when he's going to come back. You know, he comes back for a few games. They play really well with him. And then he re-aggravates another injury. He's had some, a lot of different injury concerns over the last few years. It, it's tough to see because when he's on the ice, he's just a tremendous playmaker and a good two-way player. But, you know, I, I think... It's just been so inconsistent when he's on the ice. It's difficult to predict when he'll be back. But, you know, if, if he comes back and he's healthy for the rest of the season, they're, they're, they'll be in good shape. It was funny because Cassidy has been used to talking about these injuries game after game. So after last night's game, he said, speaking of injuries, we didn't have any tonight. So we'll have 10 extra minutes to talk about the game. So he was pretty excited about that. Yeah, take the <laughs> victories where you can get them. Okay, let's talk about around the league. The Oilers, they're a hot mess right now. They're a yeah, disaster. Um, goalie Cam Talbot was placed on injured reserve and he will be out at least two weeks, maybe longer. This comes at a bad time for the team. They were just getting back on track. They had won three of their past four games. Overall, though, they've lost six of their last ten and they just don't have that same backup goalie situation as the Bruins do. Not every team can be so fortunate. And remember, this team entered as one of the Stanley Cup favorites. They did. You know, any team with Carmack McDavid is going to be expected to go far in the playoffs, but one man cannot do it all himself. You mentioned Talbot. He started the last 108 of the last 120 games that they've played this season and last. I think that burden is really starting to wear on him. Uh, of the 59 goal qualified goalies who at least have five games played this year, he's 36 and 5 on 5 save percentage, according to sportsnet.ca. So he's been really worked a, a lot, and they're going to need their offense to step up in, the, in this absence because, as you mentioned, they don't have the very good backup goaltending. They haven't really replaced uh, some of their depth players that let go in the offseason. And Peter Shirelli, I think he came under a lot of fire here as the GM. He's made some pretty questionable trades. The Taylor Hall for Adam Larson trade was very questionable when he made it. Uh, giving up Jordan Eberle for Ryan Strom has not looked uh, to be a good move. Eberle has 10 goals on pace for another 30-goal season. Meanwhile, Strom only has four. Uh, he's really only a third-line center right now. So very uh, some sh questionable moves in the front office, but they have to do something. Either it's a major trade or adding some depth. As currently constituted, they are not going to make the playoffs in a very tough Pacific division. So he has his work cut off for him, Shirelli. Um, this is going to be interesting. I, you don't want to see a panic move this early in the season, but if they start to fall out of it, you know, they're going to need to do something. You couldn't have predicted this one heading into the season. No, it's, it's very difficult. They, they have a really good team. They re-signed McDavid. They re-signed Dreisaitl in the offseason. A lot of optimism coming into this year. So to see with them where they are, it's, it's, it's really surprising. And how do you like this, Nick? Some breaking trade news happening I today between the Devils and the Ducks. Now the Ducks traded defenseman Sammy Vatanen and a conditional draft pick to the New Jersey Devils. In return... They get centers Adam Henrique and Joseph Blandisi, along with a 2018 third-round pick. So what do you think? Who won this trade? You don't have to go with the Devils. They already had a pretty gr a good group of young defensemen. They get Vatsanen, who's a very good offensive defenseman. Missed a lot of October with an injury, but he can put up a lot of points. He can excel in the power play. He's great for a fast, the fast uh, skill-based uh, NHL that we have now. And he's on a very team-friendly deal. Signed through the 2019-20 season, less than a $5 million cap hit. I think this is a bit of a panic move for the Ducks. They've had a lot of injuries. Almost their entire top two lines have been out, Not most notably veteran centers Ryan Kessler and Ryan Getzlav. They did need some offense, but I'm thinking, like, could they have gotten somebody better than Adam, Hen uh, than Adam Henrique for a player like Sammy Vodson, who's a legit top four defenseman? I know the Ducks have a lot of defensemen. There's a position of strength they could trade from, but I really don't like the, the haul back that the, the, the Ducks got in this trade. I thought they could have gotten more. 
uh, if they waited longer, especially closer to the deadline. But they are starting to fall out of the playoff race. So they did need to make a move. But I think if I had to pick a winner, clearly the Devils. Okay. Well, as we mentioned, we're about a quarter of the way through the regular season. So plenty of more hockey news to come and plenty more of our podcast with Spoken B. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, for all your Bruins news, make sure you keep it on Nesson.com.